Hey everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. It's looking ugly out there in some places. Um, we are under a severe damaging thunderstorm alert, but we're not getting it. It's just north of us and it's in Lewiston and we actually got caught in it on the edge of it and we found out my truck can handle pretty good when it needs to because we got out of it fast and those are some wicked looking clouds though how they're moving and forming um, mom even called and warned me and said keep an eye on that because there's 60 this is weird there's 60 mile an hour winds just north of us and uh, we we are up oh, I had one raindrop just hit me we're south, we're five miles south of Lewiston proper, and there's thunder, lightning, and quarter size hail and up to 60 mile an hour winds up there. And we were in Atlanta, and we got hit, and it was horrible. Look at that mushrooming right there, that one. It's so weird how they're moving. Those are ominous clouds. Anyway, we got hit. Hail was coming down. It wasn't quarter size, thankfully. We got hit on the edge of the storm. And the rain was brutal. You couldn't see a thing. And uh, once the, there was a break in the storm, I hit it and got us out. And we headed south because I, I knew the weather. There was actually an alert on the radio. And I knew the weather. Um, I saw the pattern was going to pass to the south. And you know what? I figured we'll get home and we'll be safe. And here we are, dead calm. Dead calm. Uh, Mom called and said, you know, you got to watch out because that could be tornado weather. Anyway, you can hear um, the thunder and lightning over Lewiston. And Gaylord is getting blasted, they said. Um, they said animals and livestock will be harmed and the wind will damage houses it's, and trees. Uh, so I'm happy we're here, where we are. It's like the hand of God protects us, because the bad stuff always goes north of us. Almost every single time. So, I'm happy of that. One good thing about where we live. And right there is clear. Clearer. Anyway, I'll show you why we got caught in the storm, what we were doing. This is the deal of the century. Some of you guys know what that is immediately. Some of you guys will be excited, and other you have Others, people will be like, huh? This is a David Bradley walk-behind tractor. This is what you got when in between horses and the modern-day tractor that you got now. This was your small farmer had these and your homeowners. So this is a beast. These things are so heavy, heavy-duty and geared so powerful so I won't talk numbers because I get issues with certain people for that but oh, and there's a bike let's just say it said make an offer and I made an offer and he accepted and I got it so um, it came with the plow which is cool and the plow alone is worth what I paid for it alone I've been watching David Bradley's for a while and um, so I got the plow and then all these extra pieces in this little metal box and oh wow it rained that much on the way home oh wow I gotta empty that out and then after all that I was quite happy but then it came with we had to go out in the forest and pick this up a disc that is so cool so that is a small pull behind disc. There's six six discs for the David Bradley. And they turn. These old machines, they never die. They it works. Now there were a lot of different um, attachments and implements made for the David Bradley. This can do anything any of your lawn and garden equipment can do. There was everything for this. So um I'd love to eventually replace everything I have with the David Bradleys uh, because they're so versatile. 
And instead of having a bunch of machines, you just have an attachment for different things. I mean, a different attachment for, for the machine for each job you want to do, but one machine. So you got one motor to maintain, one motor to keep gas in, one motor to keep the carburetor clean. And believe me, anybody that has a bunch of equipment knows the burden of winterizing all of your equipment. Because if you don't keep those carburetors cleaned out next spring, they're not going to run. And the more you have, the more work it is. One motor to change oil. Basically, you know what I mean. That's great. And I don't know. The, the rim is ugly, but those can be found and replaced. It still holds air, so it has to be a tube on there. But um, that's ugly. But the wheels are holding up. The rubber is good, not even dry rotted. So my guess is that sat buried underground for a while in about this direction. And uh, about this deep. That must have been, I'm thinking that was underground for a while. That's sad, but it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, the rims are replaceable. And the bushings inside um, are not so hot, so that needs to be redone. But the machine itself seems to be good. I haven't checked for spark. I mean, honestly, I didn't care, considering the amount of equipment I got with it. There's also those, they go, he said, he thinks, on the discs. I'm not sure what those are. Um, there's two of these wheels. Oh, it's heavy. No idea. Um, I... Honestly, I'm going to have to start researching to find out, but I'm guessing that this goes on here somehow and sets your depth. Otherwise, your discs are just going to sink. I'm thinking it's either that or for the plow. He thought it was for the discs, but um, it could be for the plow. There's a whole lot of attachments, but so I'm going to have to figure this out. But you can definitely set your depth. So I've got to figure out how that works. Um, the plow was on the machine. We took it off to load it. And in this model, it's different than the one I've got uh, previously. In this one, the whole engine slides back and forth to put pressure on the pulleys. That's it's different. I hope I'll get it running. Um, it is an old Briggs. And uh, it's an old cast iron, heavy, heavy, heavy duty Briggs. So um, I'm going to look that up, actually. The model. I want to look that up. Focus. You're not going to focus. Bad weather today. I can't read it. I'm going to have to get my camera and, and uh, photograph that later. Side plug. Very unusual. Side mounted. Plug uh, mounted on the side of the head. Very, very unusual. But, um, it's probably going to be an easy fix as long as it has spark. I'll figure that out in a little bit. But here it sits during the storm. Pretty good deal. That's the find of the day here. So, if this works, I will get rid of our garden tiller and make profit on that and keep this behemoth for doing the work of 10 rototillers because it's they're so powerful. They're, they're awesome machines. I love it. And I love an antiques. Well, that's it for now. Uh, we're still resting and taking a little easy. And don't worry, we uh, I protected myself on the trip. And the girls went for the ride just to get some air. Stayed in the vehicle, so we're all good. But that's uh, an amazing thing I wanted to share with you. It's, boy, this one's, it's solid. It's really solid. It's got the throttle still on there. And it's got the, um, the, the that's the crazy thing. Look at that. It slides the motor on the shaft. This is your clutch. And it slides the motor on the shaft to tighten the belt and then clamp that down and it's locked in. And that takes off your clutch. Pretty cool system. Very different from the other one I got. Anyway, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to get some numbers off this and do some research online. Well, I got it off the truck. What I did some research. I haven't found all the details yet, but I found out it's a 19, I think it's a 1947 or 48. I think it was a 47, I just looked it up. And two horse engine. That just doesn't sound right because it's so massive. That engine is so huge, but it's all heavy duty cast iron. 
and from my research from the serial number on there it comes out to be a uh, uh, 47 this is a cast iron head that's heavy heavy duty it's a B model B engine with three zero 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 five eight and the serial is one seven two um, seven three three so looking it up I think it said 1947 for that one and uh, by looking up the engine I was able to find out that this is a very rare machine that was either made by the if I am remembering the details right my head is still fuzzy from the um, the bug that we got this is either made by the Ohio plow company and it was called a Blackhawk or it was made by the I know this is going to sound funny. Um, Coxhut. Oh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. C O C K S H U T T company in Canada. So there were not many of these sold in America. Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana. There were four states that these could be found in generally because they were sold from a co op. And. Uh, that's what I found out so far. Whether it's made in Canada or the one from made in America, I'm not sure. But it's an E497 on the top of the transmission. So this is not a David Bradley. I did not think it was a David Bradley when I brought it home because it just has different uh, controls, different setup. The engine slides to engage or disengage your drive. And there's a, um, when you engage the drive, it, there's a lever that engages the transmission and forward. And then when you disengage the drive, the transmission is in neutral. And, of course, the belts are slipping. And then you can go in reverse with your, you can pull it in reverse. There's no actual reverse on this. So you can, it'll drive forward or you can pull it in reverse. And the controls are all different. The way it's built is different. So it took me some research to find out what I had here, actually. I don't know what this is for. Um, there is... Oops. It's, well, anyway. It looks like that attaches to something down here. There's that... This lever does something. And then there's another point down there to connect to. The clamps on there with a broken piece of metal, I believe, goes to the plow that was on it when I got it. So that's got to be welded, taken off, and welded back onto the plow. And I guess that would give you your adjustment where you want that plow to run, at which angle. And then you've got three points on the, the motor, on the, on the uh, transmission itself, on the frame, to fasten it to for your different angles. And then uh, what helped me find this is I found an actual brochure from the past for this machine. And it shows the plow and the disc were part of some of the standard attachments that came with this. And I think there was a sickle mower and a front blade uh, plow. And some other stuff I couldn't quite figure out. Um, not a lot out there on this because it is quite a rare machine, but it appears to be all intact. The only problem is the weld on the handlebar needs some, some touching up. Not going to be a big deal. I need to get acetylene for my torch, or for my, um, welder. Um, is this, no, not acetylene, sorry. Boy, my head is not right. My, um, MIG welder needs gas. Ah, anyway. I need, a, uh, I need a tank of gas for the MIG welder. But that's why you haven't seen me welding yet. The tanks are a problem. I, I wanna, I'm looking for a used tank, with, and then I'll get new controls from Harbor Freight. But I'll get that going here now eventually. But this is a rugged machine, heavy-duty workhorse. I can't believe that's a two-horse. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it was raining, and all we managed to do was pick this up get it off the truck and uh, 
park it here. So that's it for now. I'll share this really cool find with you guys and see what y'all say. I'm sure somebody, one of my viewers is going to see this and they're going to know it and they're going to be excited. Well, thanks for watching. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Please like, subscribe, and share and follow our videos as we strive to become fully self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Um, beasts like this will help us with self-sufficiency on the homestead for sure. That's a, that's a big, powerful machine. By the way, hit that bell icon to get notifications when I upload a video. Talk to you all later.